Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. And the Lord God made all kind of trees to grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden, there were trees of life and the trees of knowledge, and good and evil. Eden, in the Hebrew word, means delight or pleasure. So Eden is a place of delight, a place of pleasure, joy, victory, growth and abundance. When God planted the garden, he already made up his mind to be a place of communion and fellowship with him and Adam. Trees and forests are an important part of our ecosystem and both humans and animals depend on the forests and trees for survival. We take our forests and trees for granted and when we destroy forests for development or cut trees for domestic purposes, we don't realize that we are slowly destroying an integral part of our environment. While development is necessary, it needs to be sustainable. Therefore, we need to be more careful how we treat our forests and trees. Investing in forests and trees for a secure future for our people, a regional awareness raising tour of local and global importance, was held in Nandi in Fiji in October 2005. This workshop was targeted at non-forestry personnel from policy making government agencies and other stakeholders as part of the partnership and support initiative towards the sustainable use of land, in particular forest and tree resources in the Pacific. For the last uh, three days ago, it is a, a great opportunity for me to, to attend such workshop as a non-forester I learn a lot. Um, especially on the, uh, terms of forestry, where a lot of our people really don't know or gain the knowledge about keeping the trees safe. The lack of resources available to Pacific Islands forestry departments has been consistently highlighted over the years as one of the main reasons for countries not implementing activities towards sustainable forest management. Forests play a very important role in the natural ecosystem and for the quality of life of people and other organisms. Governments, landowners, industries and the public need to ensure that the natural forest is maintained at all times. They are not an endless resource. However, they are highly renewable and there is no need to replant trees because, if used with care, forests can be sustainable. It takes years for forests to develop and grow, but it can be destroyed overnight through selfish exploitation. The money you receive will be given back to you. With that money, you can buy new clothes, television, new houses, and many other things. Forests and trees contribute to development in the Pacific Islands. However, the challenge for Pacific Island countries is not only how to sustain, but also enhance the contribution of this natural resource. The question is, how can we profit best and invest in our forest and trees without destroying it? A number of smart initiatives by local landowners have illustrated how they can protect their forest and trees and also receive economic gains from it. Uh, so we base it in conservation area lies in the yard of the mineral the range, which is the interior of Vitilebu, and the Corumbas Basang range. The proposed survey basin's conservation area covers an area of approximately 20,000 hectares, consisting of 13 land-owning units from the province of Netasir Anamosi, led by me, who is the IT. The area lies 600 to 800 meters above the sea level and widely accepted to host unique forest type with a high degree of 
endemic life forms, both fauna and flora. In the village of Ambava, in the western part of the main island Vitilevu in Fiji, an ecotourism project was established and is part of the Korea Nitu National Heritage Park. This forest conservation project provides benefits to the whole village as a source of income. It also provides security for their food with the increase in growth of wild yams and similar plants and vegetables. That uh, ecotourism uh, uh, project at uh, Apatha, I think it's, uh, that's one way we are looking at trying to convince our village people and communities back home that the, the, the forest it's not only for timber but there's a lot more to it because I think that's the mentality of most of our of our people in the past but now I think and I agree that things change that uh, thinking of forest being the only supplier for only timber it's no longer true uh, nowadays but that example where we saw in um, Apatha village, I think it's a, it's a good uh, example. Still on Vitilevu in Fiji, another group of villagers, with support from non-government organizations, have been involved in a resource management program, not only to improve their livelihood, but also to conserve and protect their environment from exploitation and ruin. Right now, most of the people, uh, the whole district is actually involved. Uh, planting mangroves, planting pine seedlings up on the re on the on the hills, and uh, we've changed the way they they farm their farmlands now. I mean, with the help of uh, land use and the government agencies, you know, come in and they help us to uh, work together. It's a sort of way where the government, the private sector and the local people work together. Uh, it's unlike other projects that are running on the same issues around Fiji, this one has, uh, what's unique about it, is we have the private sector, the guys that come in and make money off our resources, working very closely with uh, the local people. The ecological and economic value of the forest is interrelated and cannot be separated. If continuous exploitation of the forest is done purely for economic gains, then the future of Pacific Islands people will be sacrificed. I have uh, so many years in forestry. And a lot of times you get landowners coming and asking me, can I have this road built to my village? Uh, for 10, 20 years I've been asking. I'm getting old. I'd like to see a road up to my village and then, uh, you know, for services to my village, of course. Waiting for the government, he won't build it for me. I have my forest here. Can you help me get an investor in? You see, so, such questions. If he says I'm prepared to trade my forest for a road, it's good for the Western countries. You got the money. You don't have to touch the forest. You build it. They will build it. Huh? For us, the government will not build it. And that's a very big problem. The government will not build it. He asked me, can I trade it off? It's an opportunity cost, really. He's prepared to suffer that one for just a road for him to bring his stuff in. The management of forest and trees lies with landowners and they must be aware of the complex functions of the forests before they consider cutting it down. They need to be made aware that the forest as provider is needed for their future generations. However, adequate government policies and legislation, resources, technical and financial support is also needed to support landowners. The tree is very important. And it's, the tree is for life. Not any simple part of the tree is still western. But in uh, the other communities who are due to this in we west a lot of tree. We west a lot of timber. 
we thought, oh, we only take this part of the, of the tree. Let's forget about the rest. So, a lot of the, the important uh, or the useful part of the trees, as I've seen here, we use it. We don't uh, have any idea about or any knowledge about how how useful the, the, the tree is for our people. Sustainable Forest Management, or SFM, is a concept that addresses a number of issues and works at maintaining, among other things, ecosystems, biodiversity, good water quality, prevention of soil erosion, while at the same time optimizing fair benefits for current forest users and guaranteeing a forest that could still provide for the future generations. Therefore, the timber harvest that has been cut has to be sustainable. Timber is a natural product of air, water, sun energy and soil contributions and is mostly the only product out of the forest that is often circulated for commercial purpose. Degraded grassland in Fiji is called Tala Singa. This is a common sight on the drier parts of the islands. This land cover is a result of lower rainfall leading to soil degradation and dominant grass growth prone to wildfires. In the 1960s, 